welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've had this radio knocking around in the cupboard for quite some time and I thought it was time for it to be unboxed and tested. Now this is the Retifis RT95. Now some of you may have seen this radio advertised as the CRT Micron or the Anytone AT778UV. Now they're all pretty much the same radios. This is a dual band mobile radio covering 144 to 148 megahertz and then 430 to 440 megahertz. Now outside of these frequencies doesn't appear to be supported, so no programming for the UK PMR or US GMRS bands. Now output power comes with three levels. We got low at five watts, mid 15 watts, and then high at 25 watts. Later in the video, we'll test the actual power output and connect it to a dummy loaded digital power meter. With the 200 programmable channels, the RT95 supports both wideband and narrowband channels. So that's either 25 gigahertz or 12.5 gigahertz, suitable for both 70 and two meters. There is also a mid selection at 20 kilohertz, although I'm not too sure if that's used anywhere. Now in the box comes the usual accessories, such as power cable, mobile bracket with fixings, a manual and a microphone. Now the microphone also incorporates an inbuilt speaker, so you can choose to either have the received audio come from the radio, the microphone or both. And while the microphone has many function buttons to allow the user to control the radio purely from the microphone, it does feel a little bit plasticky, if that's even a word. A little more weight to the mic would have made this feel a bit more professional. Now we'll test out the transmitted and received audio later in the video. And the radio itself does have a quality feel about it. The weight mainly contributed by the chassis, which incorporates as a heatsink due to being fanless. A front facing microphone socket is something which I like which is alongside the power button, function buttons and volume control. While on the rear, we find a continuation of the heatsink, along with an SO239 socket for the antenna, a power cable and a 3.5 mm socket for an extension speaker. Now after powering on the RT95 for the first time, I would recommend you enter the menu by holding the function button, then selecting the funk menu and then changing the beep value to as low as you can go. Now this will save your sanity when it comes to changing functions on the radio without that annoying loud beep. Another nice touch this radio provides is a clear indication of what each of the P function buttons do. There are six P buttons labeled accordingly and if you press the funk button once they change function but with the function description shown on the screen next to each key. Now I really like this feature as it saves having to remember what each of those function buttons do. You'll also notice on the screen there are two frequencies shown. Now while it will monitor both frequencies, you cannot listen to both of them at the same time. The top frequency or channel will take priority over the bottom one. The main menu is easy to use with all function and menu items clearly labeled. Just press the volume control in to select and then rotate to change the value. Pressing the volume control again saves that selection. Now there is quite a lot of menu items, so it's worth familiarizing yourself with the menu layout, just in case you need to change a setting quickly. Although most used functions will be accessible from the main screen without needing to enter the menu system, like changing VFOs, power or memories. Now let's take a listen to see how the internal speaker sounds and then we'll switch to having the audio coming from just the microphone only. Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer. M7 CIN, G3Y, XZ Mobile. Hey, fine Kim. Oh, that's good, good news. Um, I wonder if 10 metres is still open. Um, if five units beginning to close down a bit uh, during the afternoon, but it might be still a bit of DX about. It's still uh, surprisingly active, isn't it? Yeah, uh, G3YXZ Mobile, uh, M7CIN. Uh, yeah, you're right, your, um, your signal is a lot better now. And um, yeah, uh, pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, I've just been, I, I seem to do very well into um, the Balkan countries, you know, like Serbia and Macedonia and elsewhere around. I may have been able to make contact with those guys. Um, so, um, yeah, it's been interesting. 
Next, we'll test the RF output power using a digital SWR on watt meter, which is connected to a 100 watt RF dummy load. Now on two meters at 145 megahertz, the low power setting provides 3.6 watts, mid setting provides 12.6 watts, and high setting provides 20.5 watts. If we then change the frequency up to the 70 centimeter handband, and set the radio's frequency to 435 MHz, the low power setting provides 3.9 watts. The mid setting provides 13.7 watts, and the high power setting provides 22 watts. So, figures on the spec sheet do differ slightly, but not by much. Now let's take a listen to how the audio from the microphone sounds. For this, I'll be using my RSPDX along with SDR Uno, for receiving and recording. This is M0 DQW testing, testing audio on the RT95, M0 DQW, M0 DQW on narrow. This is M0 DQW testing, now on mid, now on mid, this is M0 DQW testing, now on wide, this is now on the wide setting, M0 DQW testing. I would imagine the peaks to the left and right of my signal there are generated due to the radio being so close to the SDR receiver. In fact, when I brought the gain down on the SDR software, those peaks disappeared. What's interesting is that those peaks didn't seem to have any modulation, so I don't believe they were a harmonic, more likely front end overload on the SDR receiver. An interesting feature which I came across while playing with the menu settings is the ability to turn the screen upside down. Now I don't think I've seen this feature before in a radio, but it kind of makes sense. If you have your radio mounted in your car down by the footwell, then reversing the screen so your passenger could then use the radio and see the screen in the correct orientation. Pretty neat I think. Now programming via Chirp is also supported, so you can program this radio using Windows, Mac or Linux. Once programmed, the memory channels can be shown on the screen along with the name, which is a pretty standard feature these days. Now anyway, guys, that's the Retivis RT95 or whatever you know this radio as. I think it's a pretty neat little radio and if I didn't already have a Yosu and an Icom dual band radios, I probably would have this set up in the shack myself, or maybe even installed in the car. If you have one of these, let me know what you think of it. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.